morning, Calvary Church. Welcome to Church Online. I'm Pastor Kathleen, and I'm going to be your host throughout the service today. Please look out for prompts from me in the chat box if you're joining us on Zoom. That's a way that you can stay engaged throughout the service. If you could share our YouTube channel with friends and neighbors, that's a great way to invite them to church. Just look out for that on our main Facebook page for more information. If you're new with us, a special welcome to you. There's going to be a link in the chat box right now that you can click on, and that can connect you if you'd like to one of our pastors. It can also give you more information about who we are at Calvary Church and ways that you can get connected to the community. This special Mother's Day service is going to be one hour in length. We're going to spend the next few moments in worship together, and then Pastor Paul is going to come on and he's going to introduce our special guest speaker for today. Following the message, you will be given a prompt to join an optional breakout room. You do not have to join these rooms. If you'd like, you can stay in the main room, but I really encourage you to participate because this is a great way to get to know the community here at Calvary Church. Let's spend the next few moments in worship together, and I hope you have a great Sunday. Well, hello, everybody, and we're so thankful that you've joined us this morning. Um, I just want to invite you into worship, and that can look in many different ways, but we want it to be in any way that you feel comfortable, whether that's sitting or standing, um, any way that you want to join us this morning, go right ahead. Why don't we worship together? Almighty God, we lift you higher. You 
that the shadows can't deny Your name cannot be overcome Your name is alive forever lifted high Your name cannot be overcome Jesus, Jesus I live fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence. Thank you, John and Caitlin Norman, for that beautiful worship. Here are your announcements for this week. If you haven't saved the date yet for our virtual annual business meeting, make sure you get that on your calendar. It's happening May the 24th at 7 p.m. ALF is also still happening every Sunday night at 6.30. And if you haven't registered yet and you'd like to, just email sallyr at calvaryptbo.church to get yourself registered. Calvary Youth Uprising Online is happening this Friday May the 15th. You have until Wednesday to register for that. So to register, you just have to go on to our church website, go to our online schedule and scroll down until you see youth. And that's how you can register. You have, if you have any questions at all, just message Pastor John Mark and he'll help you out. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, Calvary Church Peterborough, make sure you do that so that you can see our videos throughout the week called Calvary Helps. These are where Pastor Paul interviews a different member of our community and they talk about a variety of subjects on how to navigate these strange times that we are living in. That's all for me. As always, you can check out calvaryptbo.church for more information on what's happening throughout the week. takes time and talks to me. What I love about my mom is that she's always there for me and she's very thoughtful. And I really love her cooking. And she plays games with me and gives me big hugs. Because she loves God and she loves her family and she's a lot of fun. She's kind and caring and she always takes care of me and loves me very much. I love her because of her selflessness, generosity, and love of these two. What I love about my mom is that she's scared, supportive, and always there for us. She's really nice, and I like it when she remembers to give me my allowance. She helps me with my schoolwork when it's really tough. I love my dad. 
she's kind, she's the best mom, she's respectful, and she's always willing to help. We love our mother because she shaped us into who we are today. And she always puts us and our family first. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Thanks for joining us for the Mother's Day service today, whether it be on Zoom or, or YouTube. So glad you could be here with us. I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms who are watching and the motherly figures as well. We, we want to appreciate you as well. Whether you realize it or not, when you reproduce yourself into someone else, especially with your faith, you're actually being a motherly figure to someone else. And I want to thank you for doing that. At Calvary Church, that's what we do. We reproduce ourselves. We are what we would recognize here as a disciple-making disciple. We want to grow in who we are in Christ, but we want to also share it with others and help them grow. And so we want to encourage you, if you want to continue to be a part of Calvary, there are ways you can do so. Even in the midst of this, you can tag along with another family and, and follow along with them just to invest into their life in one way or another. You can be a part of a life group in our children's ministry, youth ministry, or even in our adults. We want to encourage you to continue to invest in people even along the journey here. And we want to continue to keep providing for you opportunities as well to do that. And so if you want to give financially to what we do here at Calvary, I would encourage you to do one of two things. You can go to our website, calvaryptvo.church, and you can click on our giving tab there. Or you can e-transfer to donations at calvaryptvo.church. And either way, those, uh, those funds will go directly into what we do here on a weekly basis to serve our community with the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Now, right now, we have the awesome opportunity to listen to Joanne Goodwin. Joanne, many of you are familiar with Joanne. She's been at Calvary over the years, and, uh, and she's done some of our women's retreats in the past. And, and so we're excited. She set, reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, Paul, listen, I have a, a Mother's Day video that I've been putting together. Would that be of benefit for you in the midst of this? And I said, yes, it would. And so she graciously has, has sent this along our way. And so why don't we go now to listen to what Joanne Goodwin has to say to us about Mother's Day. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks for letting me into your living room. I love the decor. I love the pajamas you're wearing. You got your coffee, some of you have snacks, I got my coffee. Wouldn't this be beautiful every Sunday morning if you could come in in your pajamas with a cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah. It's Mother's Day though. And you know, what does that mean when I say that? When you hear, happy Mother's Day, like some of you, you got great kids, you got a wonderful mother, and you think, yay, I'm gonna celebrate all this wonderful motherhood. And some of you are thinking it brings sadness. Because maybe your kids are lost and in dark places and you're worried and you're concerned and so it kind of brings a pain to you and some of you god forbid have lost a child can't even imagine that kind of agony and some of you don't have your own children and some of you have planned it that way and you're delighted and you're happy some of you don't have biological children and it hurts you and it brings a pain to you because you really wanted to have your own children just we all have different ideas. Some of you, maybe you never really had a mother who cared for you. Some mothers have abandoned their children at birth. Some kept them and just abused them. And I mean, mother holds a different picture for so many of us. But I, I hope that as we talk about this Mother's Day, I'm not going to do the whole Proverbs 31 thing. We all know we can't do that. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I, it's, it's there. It's, it's good. But you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about how God mothers us and comforts us. And you say, well, hey, you, know, you, can't, you can't just say that. Well, you know, I can. In, in Isaiah 66, verse 13, it says, as a mother comforts a child so will I comfort you. God said that himself to his people. As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. And I want to talk about some of the comfort the Lord gives to us, his mothering, his nurturing. And, you know, often we relate that more to a woman. I, 
I know it's not always fair because some men are much more nurturing than their wives. Um, my husband is a nurturer, and he's really good at it, and he's fabulous at it. But it doesn't mean that, that also it doesn't mean that if you're a nurturer, it doesn't mean as a woman that you can't also be a strong warrior for God. And a, but it's just that some of these associations are usually made towards women. We tend to be seen as the more nurturing. And, you know, they've done some great leadership studies. And when they discovered the leadership styles of men and women, they have often found that women tend to be more nurturing towards their staff, more inclusive. So, I don't know. So, we're just going to call it the mothering part of God. Um, you know, in that verse I just read to you that um, he said, as, as, I, as a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. Do you know, that comes from Isaiah 66. And in Isaiah chapters 56 to 66, are, it contains an oracle that was written to God's people after exile and after the second temple was built. And, you know, some of the people, when they saw the new temple, wept because they remembered the old one. They remembered the one in all its glory that, that Solomon had built and and they longed for the old, and some people left family behind in Babylon, and some of them died in Babylon, and some of them are still there, and they're back in their homeland, but they're under foreign rule now, and it's just not the same as it was. And so in that oracle to them, he says, as, as, a, um, as a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. And, you know, I was thinking of this pandemic when it's over, people say, oh, it'll never be the same. Everything's going to be different. And I don't know. I don't know what it'll look like. Some people will have lost their businesses. Some people will have lost a loved one who had to die alone. Finances, situations, school, I don't know what it's going to look like. But perhaps this same thing can apply to us. Perhaps God is saying to you, be comforted. I can comfort you just like your mother comforts you. I've got that here for you. You know, one of the ways that um, when I think of a, a mother's comfort, I show it by cooking. I cook. I love to cook for my children. I love to bake for my children. That's how I show them love, one of the ways. It's just, you know, even during this pandemic, Easter Easter Sunday, you know, we took a big basket of homemade pancakes and sauce and whipped cream and strawberries and my homemade cupcakes, oh, they were beautiful. Green and yellow and pink, beautiful. Little Easter eggs on top. That's how I was showing them my love. Look what I've done for you to show you my love. Well, you know, I, I like to say we have a God who sometimes cooks for us. Yeah, well, there's a couple examples in the Bible. One of them was in the Old Testament in 1 Kings 19. When Elijah, who had just had a, a huge victory, he, um, he, you know, the, with the prophets of Baal, and they wanted to pray down fire, and they begged their gods, and they did everything they could, and they danced, and they called, and no fire. Then Elijah said, not only will I call down fire, but soak this baby with water. They poured water all over the thing, and he prayed, and of course, God came, consumed the, the sacrifice, consumed the altar, licked up the water, it says, Great, a great victory, and then the prophets of Baal were destroyed. And then he heard that Jezebel, the wicked queen, was going to kill him. I guess he got scared, maybe he got depressed, maybe you get the blues after a big victory, sometimes that happens, but he ran away, and at one point, he left his servant aside and said, let me let, just go into the desert, I'm just going to go into the desert by myself. And he did, and he, he found a broom tree, I don't know what a broom tree is, I could have researched it, but I didn't bother. I heard the word broom, thought of housekeeping. I don't like broom trees. Actually, apparently, it's a kind of a sheltering, low-level tree. He went under that tree, and he said, God, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Kill me. Pretty low state to be in. But what I like is God didn't immediately go to him and say, okay, Look what I just did. And now you're sitting here saying you want to die. Come on, what's your problem? Get up. Are you not trust me anymore? No, you know what he did? It said the angel of the Lord woke him up and said, I baked you some bread over coals. And I got a jug of cold water here for you. You see, the angel of the Lord is a phrase that's used many times in the Old Testament to mean 
a manifestation of God himself or Jesus. We call it a, a theophany. Uh, somehow God manifests himself in his presence. You know several examples of that. Uh, the fourth man in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the voice out of the burning bush, Moses heard. Manifestations of God. So when we hear the angel of the Lord, we know this is a, a manifestation of God himself. And instead of getting mad at him, he cooked bread for him. Do you love this? I'm a mother. I love this. Woke him up and said, eat. So he, he ate and he drank some of the water. Then he went back to sleep. Then the angel of the Lord returned and woke him up again and said, okay, eat. I got some more here for you. Eat. Rest. And then he said, I want you to go up to that, the Mount uh, what was that mount? Horeb. <laughs> I want you to go up there, and uh, I'm going to speak to you up there. And you know, that's the same mountain where Moses heard the uh, burning bush speak to him. Anyways, he went up there. He journeyed over to it, having been strengthened by the food and the rest. And he went up into this cave, and then God said to him, Okay, what are you doing here? I don't know if he said it like that. I'm saying it like a Jewish mother. What are you doing here? But he said, What are you doing here? And out came his complaint. And he said, you know, I have been zealous for you, God. But they wouldn't accept your covenant. And they broke down your altars. And, and they're killing all the prophets. And I'm the only one left. And then the voice said to him, go out on the side of the mountain. I'm, I'm going to pass by. My presence is going to pass by. So he stood out there. And this magnificent wind that just rocked everything. And then the earthquake that shook and the rocks shook. And then a fire. But each time it said God was not in the wind. God was not in the fire. God was not in the earthquake. And then came a gentle, still voice. And that was God. And then he said to him for the second time, okay, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he poured out his complaint again. I'm the only one left. They wouldn't accept you. They've tore down the hospital and they're trying to kill me. And, you know. and then God said to him, he said, okay. He talked to him and we're assuming the gentle voice was still going on. He's not slapping him up side the head. He's saying, okay, listen, Elijah, this is what I want you to do. He gave him instructions. I want you to go down there. I want you to anoint Elisha. I want you to do this. And, da, da, da. and uh, by the way, there are 7,000 still who have not bowed to Baal. Uh, you all know that story, but, but to me, the gentleness with which God treated him, fed him, let him sleep, gave him some more bread, then gave him an audiovisual presentation showing that he wasn't always in these great things, but sometimes he was a gentle voice. He cooked for him. I love that. And the New Testament, we have example of him cooking for us too. Uh, this is a beautiful verse. John 21, 12. Come and have breakfast. You know who said that? Jesus. The disciples are in the boat. Jesus is on the shore. Now, this is after his resurrection. He has seen the disciples. We think this is the third time. The first time he appeared with the disciples and, and Thomas wasn't there. The next time... Uh, uh, Thomas was there and he saw all of them. And then this time he was on the shore and he saw them fishing, not very successfully. He said, boys, throw the net on the other side. And they did and they hauled so many fish they couldn't even get the nets into the boat. And then John recognized, it's the Lord. And so they went whipping off to the shore. Of course, Peter first because Peter is, in my estimation, a little bipolar. He's either denying Jesus or he's the first one to step out of the boat anyway. So Jesus... So Peter runs to the shore because Jesus is saying, come and have breakfast. He cooked fish for them. And he made bread for them. We don't have any indication that Jesus had ever approached Peter before this about what he had done, about his denying him three times. We don't have any indication that did. So this was probably the first time. So they ate. Everybody was comfortable. They had lots of fish. Everything was good. Then Jesus takes Peter aside and says, Peter, do you love me? Oh, yes, Lord, you know I do. Okay, but Peter, do, do you love me? 
Oh, Lord, you know I do. Why are you asking this? And then again, Peter, do you love me? I don't know. Sometimes people say three times because he denied him three times. I don't know. But when God asked him, when Jesus asked him those questions, he then said, now I have work for you to do. He didn't throw him out because he'd been an idiot. He didn't push, put him aside because he hadn't been perfect. He just reaffirmed his love. You're mine, aren't you, Peter? You're mine. Okay, feed my sheep and follow me. Two beautiful examples of God cooking for us. As a mother cooks for a child. As a mother comforts a child. I just love those. Maybe it's because I have this thing about food. I love food. I love it too much. But So then that's literally cooking for them. And then we have that verse in the Psalm, Psalm 23, 5, where it says, He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Wow. In the presence of your enemies? Some say the shepherd and sheep analogy is carried on down to verse 5. Some say, no, it's a whole new one. He's now presenting himself as a host. He's prepared a banquet for them. But the key part is it's in the presence of their enemies. And so that can say to us today, what is the enemy surrounding you right now? Is it the outcome of this pandemic? Have you, have you lost your business? Have you lost a lot of money? Have you lost a loved one? God forbid. What are you going through? Is it finances? Is it trouble in the family? What is it? What are you going through? And, and I believe God says to us, in the middle of all that, I am spreading a table for you. I will feed you. I will comfort you in the middle of all this. He comforts us today. He makes a table for us today. So he doesn't literally feed us now, but how does he feed us and comfort us now? Well, I think there are several ways. One is when we come to the table of the Lord, communion. We come to participate in the body and the blood to remember. And when you're feeling down and overwhelmed by the enemy around you, to pause and take time to remember, this is the price you paid for me. I really am forgiven. You really do love me. And the community of it, you're doing it with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. That fellowship, that communion, that's one of the ways he comforts us. Another way he comforts us now is, um, I just lost my place there. Oh, yeah, is sometimes with, just with his scripture. Sometimes you can read the scriptures and, you know, you do it a lot and you read it. But every once in a while, God uses one scripture specifically to speak comfort into your heart. I remember once I was going through something and uh, terribly concerned for someone in my family, terrified for someone in my family. Panic was starting to grip my heart because there was nothing I could do. And I was saying, God, God, what are you doing? And you know what immediately popped into my head? Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. I didn't even know where it was in the Bible. I found out later it's in Psalm 62. I don't remember ever having learned it, but it jumped into my spirit and immediately I felt the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. Find rest, O oh my soul. Where? In this? Or maybe you can do that? No, in God alone. In God alone. And I was comforted. Sometimes we have to teach our children how to soothe themselves, how to self-soothe. Sometimes with a blankie or somebody, when you're not right there, they can soothe themselves. I have a little grandson. God love him. Beautiful. Two years old. Gorgeous. And we saw him doing this a couple of times, and we were quite surprised. He was upset. He wasn't getting his way, and he didn't like that. I can't, he says. He's, he was mad. But then he sort of stood at the wall and went, and then he had another little cry, and then, and then he turned around, and he was okay. And we were saying, is he, is he learning to self-soothe? Has he just learned how to soothe himself? Sometimes we need to do that. 
when we can't sense the comfort of God. I was driving down the highway one day, overwhelmed with grief again for someone that I loved very much. And I didn't know what to do. And I, didn't, and I remember saying to God, God, please, please, if I ever needed to feel, to sense your presence and your comfort, it's now. And nothing. Nothing. So I self-soothed. I said, God, I really, I really wanted to feel your presence. But since I cannot feel it, I will rest on what I know to be true. And I know you hold me and my children in the palm of your hand. A couple months later, it was Mother's Day. And you know what someone gave me for Mother's Day? A ceramic figurine of a hand with a child nestled in it. Had God heard me on the highway? Yeah. Did I automatically feel his comfort? No. I self-soothed. I encouraged myself with the things that I knew to be true from his word. Sometimes he comforts us through the people of God. Community, that's why we need each other. I remember one time at our church camp. Again, I guess I get overwhelmed a lot in my life. Overwhelmed with personal pain that I didn't know how to deal with. And I went up to the altar and I just cried. And this retired minister came up to me. He saw my pain. He felt my pain. He just put his arms around me and cried with me. Oh, and then he prayed too, but he cried with me. If that man could feel that for me. Is that how my Jesus sees me. He weeps with us. He feels our pain. The people of God. I'm suggesting to you today that God can even speak to you sometimes through music. He brings back a spiritual song or a hymn or a, a something and you're touched. Very concerned about someone in my family another time. And I heard the song, there is always a place at the table. There's a feast that is waiting all your own. Your place, listen to this one. Your place is set each time the family gathers. But it will never be the same till you are home. Some of you need to come to the table. It's set there for you. Some have been away from the table and you think, no, I got to come back. I need the comfort and love of a nurturing parent right now. I need to be fed. Come to the table. Some of you are already at the table, but maybe you've pushed back a little. Time to pull up close. Time to pull your chair up close to the table and taste of the food, and let him speak to you. And if you have never known the comfort and love of a caring mother, you can get it directly from him. Not only is he a father to the fatherless, he is a mother to the motherless. Pull into the table. Come home. Come home. Father, I'm asking you, to just put that, that thing in people's heart like you do that says, come home. I ask you, Father, to, to encourage us to pull up closer to the table, to sense you, to eat from your banqueting table. Do this, Lord, this morning as we sit in your presence. As we sit in our living rooms, as we are together with our family, speak to us in our hearts, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Put your hands in
I take you global. I've been Moreno, Papi Loco, since 88. I like dance on the low, low, it's in my torso. I got fire like some culture, see it in my ojos. Okay, okay, we don't walk away. In my go day, no way in my go leave. Oh no, not today, do not be having but it's on the lead. We before you speak, though. Think before you eat. How you love a country, food more than its people. Cause I think you hide behind your politics. You do not want answers, you want arguments. Okay. Yes, I love the kingdom more than I love my nation. Yeah. Yes, I love my neighbor more than I love his papers. Okay, okay. Stop, stop. Still lie. But we try, we try. We don't, do not, do not die. Coming live from the Citadel. I was made alive in the bigger bell when Washington fell. Still hit a Denzel. Love. Till we live well, we gon' play the role real well. Champion. Yeah, 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 Chile, Nicaragua, Argentina y Bolivia. Aquí no somos ya familia. Unidos como nos dice la Biblia. Quiero que la gente me suba las manos bien altas para el techo. Y si tú eres latino y no te avergüenzas, pues date dos puños bien duros para el pecho. I done met the bravest, uh, but they still sing when they living through the anguish. Uh, never be famous when you got a smile for your kids when you know that they in danger. Uh, you feel anger? Uh, Puerto Rico, many bodies never claimed you. And when you look into your neighbor and you get hatred, but they be back on vacation. But the people still make it, they will never break it. Cause we're dealing all with the grace here, being amazed here. It's been a couple days here, see the courageous people that you don't want to fight great here. Probably really want to have the gospel for the nations. Cause I see sheep when you say your heart's full, homie. I see eat when I see weak. I pray to God I see me. Come on. One time for the sauce. Mommy, you're a fighter yeah. We just wanna live I cannot forget As long as I live I'll be standing right here We just wanna live Let the light in Always alive, you will not forgotten yeah. We just wanna live Let the light in Trouble won't last But the word will Baby, we just gotta live I got to heal